I'm going on a trip and this is the smallest laptop I have. This is the Dell XPS 13. Not the most ergonomically friendly laptop in my opinion, but it's small and that's what I need right now. So I'm going to try and set up an Android development environment because I'm gonna need that with me. And since this is a Snapdragon X Elite machine, I'm gonna be using a Samsung S23 to go along with it so I can do development on the device. The thing is, I don't know if this is gonna work or not. We know that Android Studio does not have a Windows on ARM version and this runs Windows on ARM. Now I'm gonna be using a cross-platform approach so I can write my apps with JavaScript called NativeScript. And the whole JavaScript ecosystem works very well on Windows on ARM. It's just that one piece, is this going to actually build and deploy an Android app for me on the device? That's what I need to figure out today. So I'm gonna start right now. I really don't know what's gonna happen. <laughs> All right, this is a bit hacky, but I'm not a huge fan of the keyboard that doesn't have, um, well, it's not like this, right? This is a normal keyboard. I'm used to it. I got the little grooves in there. Uh, this one doesn't have any grooves, this Dell. And I've reviewed the Dell separately before. You can check out that video. I'll link to it down below. And the trackpad, not the best because I don't know where it starts, where it ends. So I'm using a little dock with an external keyboard. This is a little portable Keychron, really light, but it's mechanical and I kind of like the feel of it. I'm getting used to these mechanical keyboards that everybody's talking about. And of course, I got my trusty mouse. I don't want to be bogged down with uh, learning a new keyboard, trying to get used to it, learning a new trackpad. I want to use the tools that I'm used to so that I can be more productive right away. All right, here we go. Start with Android Studio. Yeah, I know. It's not going to work well. See that right here? Windows machines with ARM-based CPUs are currently not supported. Boo. That's fine. I'm just going to get Android Studio Koala here. I want to get this because it's easier to download dependencies like SDKs and things like that. So I'm going to go to actually the native script website because I want to follow the instructions there, specifically the environment setup for Windows. And they use Chocolatey. I don't normally use Chocolatey. I prefer WinGet these days, but they recommend Chocolatey, so I'm going to do it. I want to follow the instructions step by step. Got to run as administrator. Set execution policy on restricted. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I made an entire video on how to do a developer setup for Windows for ARM, and I'll link to that video down below too. There's the command to install Chocolatey. Don't type this out by hand, folks. There's a nice handy copy button. Chocolatey done. We need Chocolatey to install other dependencies. Now they say to use NVM. I don't like Windows NVM. I like NVM for Mac or Linux. So instead of that, I'm just gonna install Node.js directly. Pre-built installer, Windows for ARM 64, that's nice. It's already detected. Actually, I don't want the current one. I want the LTS version. Download that one. Now, I think I already have Python installed. Let me check. Nope. Gotta grab Python. Downloads. Download. Add to path. Install now. I'm going through this kind of quickly, I know. But if you want the whole thing, watch that other video. I want to get to this as soon as possible. UPDF is a professional and intuitive PDF editor available on Windows, Mac OS, iOS, and Android. AI-powered UPDF allows you to easily create, annotate, edit, and convert PDFs. You can also summarize PDFs, translate them, chat with them via AI, and convert long PDFs to mind maps. Check out UPDF's limited time $1 flash sale and get a chance to win an iPhone 16. Link in the description. All right. Let's see, node version, we've got node. Python version, still getting used to this keyboard. Python, 312, node 20. Good. JDK. Be careful here. You want the JDK that's compatible with ARM. By the way, I'm going to be switching back and forth real quick because Android Studio takes a while to install. So I'm going to switch back to Android Studio and I want to do the custom setup here. Android SDK platform, API 35, virtual device is kind of useless here on this machine. I'm going to change the installation in a little bit. First, I'm going to install the default stuff. Now, I'm going to use Chocolatey to install this Temerin 17, which is uh, JDK. We're going to start things there. Uh, the reason I'm a little concerned is uh, I'm not sure if the entire stack will work with ARM, so I want to install the non-ARM version, the x64 version as well. I need to run from an elevated command prompt. So let's run as administrator here. So it's downloading the x64 version of that right now. Now for Android Studio, jumping back to that, let's go to more actions, SDK manager. And I want to make sure that we have, let's show package details here. I want to get platform 35 and API 35, but I also want to get the ARM versions. So I'm going to show package details here. And I'm going to go get the Google APIs ARM, Google Play ARM. I want to get Android 14, Platform 34. And I might install extra things, but it's better to have extra things than not enough things. SDK tools, 
Android SDK command line tools. Let's grab that one. Show package details. We want to get tools for 34 and 33. Same thing here. I want to get the version 13 of command line tools for the SDK command line tools. And I'm going to grab CMake as well. Not for this, but it's nice to have it. And let's get some Google Play stuff in here. Google Play services. Now we're not going to have the Haxum because that's only on Intel. That's why we're doing this. Okay, let's install all this stuff. Now let's make sure I have Java installed. I'm going to restart my terminal and do Java C version. There it is, 17. Now we got to get into environmental variables. So I'm going to search for env and edit the environmental variables, which is right here. I want to do a couple things here. I want to add a new one. This is called Android Home. First, I need to add a path, which is this right here. So there's already a path here. I'm going to edit the path and I'm going to add a new place. And that is not a good path. Let's browse. Program files, Eclipse, Adoptium, JDK, Bin. There it is. Okay. Press OK here and OK there. And there's going to be one more. We need to configure Android Home environmental variable. Let's go back to environmental variables. Add one more new Android Home without the space at the end. And this is going to be local app data Android SDK. So let's copy that. Gonna paste this in, press OK and OK. Next, we gotta add platform tools to path. So again, we gotta go back to environmental variables, select path, edit it, new, and let's add that, platform tools. OK, now installing the native script CLI. Let's copy this. I'm gonna go to an elevated prompt here to make sure we don't run into any issues and npm install g native script. Hopefully this is it, we'll see. NS doctor. This will tell us if everything is installed correctly. No issues were detected. That's crazy. That's pretty good. Let's go to the code directory and I'm going to use the native script CLI NS create hello. And I'm going to use uh, plain TypeScript app hello world. That's fine. Wow, we're cooking. Didn't know it was going to be so quick. CD, hello. Now this is a cross-platform app that you can write in TypeScript or JavaScript. But if you want to develop for iOS, you have to do it on a Mac. Okay, so this iOS thing won't work here. This is a Windows machine. That's just the way it is. But the Android one should. I'm going to plug this in. This is the worst message here. Allow access to your data, allow or deny. And then there's other USB options. So if I click that button, I won't be able to allow or deny. If I click deny or allow, I won't be able to click that button. Come on, who made this? I'm gonna allow, of course. Make sure your Android phone is set up for developer mode. That way you can allow USB debugging. So now we're gonna see if this is gonna work. NS run Android. The moment of truth, come on. Huh, okay. I didn't wanna use ADB, but... Oh, allow debugging. Yes, allow. Always allow from this computer. This is building. The app is building and it's compiling for Android. If this works, this is a good path for people that are using the Xelite machines to develop Android apps right now. And if this doesn't work, then it might still be a good way, but I probably just messed something up. Keeping on that time because that time right there, I'd say that's probably a record for me. Oh, listen to all that noise. The Dell decided to wake up. All right, come on now. Now, installing on device, this is gonna pop up. I know, there it is. Yes, look at that. There's my app. I mean, it's a hello world app. It's not super exciting, but the idea that I just built an Android app and deployed it to my phone. I mean, it's not a new idea. It's pretty old, but here I thought these new laptops, the X Elite machines, they're gonna have trouble with Android development, but they're not. All you gotta do is just use an external device. And if you're doing mobile development, you should probably have one anyway. I'm pretty happy about this. I think I uh, can take this guy on the road now and not be worried that uh, I won't be able to do my work or attend to any bugs or issues that might pop up. I think I'm gonna do it. And by that, I mean, leave my heavy MacBook Pro at home this time. It's gonna be weird, we'll see. I'll report back soon when I'm done with my trip and I'll let you know how it goes. Subscribe if you don't wanna miss that, if you wanna find out how everything went. Other than that, if you do wanna see the development setup on either Windows or Windows for ARM, I have both of those, I'll link to them right over here and down below. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.